The design checker is a tool in Design Shop that will look through your design and see if there are potential problem areas and flag them for you so you can address them before it ever gets to the machine. There are different things that the design checker looks for. It will look at tie stitches. Um, if it doesn't have tie stitches or if it has too many, it will flag that area and let you know. If uh, you have a lot of stitch lengths that are too short or too long, it will let you know that as well. Too short can cause some thread breaks. Too long can snag and pull out. You may also see that it will flag for uh, densities. So if your densities are far too tight, the stitches are too close together, that can cause some issues. And so the design checker will flag that as well. Underlay, um, typically designs without underlay don't sew as well as designs with underlay. So if it sees elements without underlay, it will flag that. And then layers, lots and lots of layers over each other can build up and cause some issues for potential thread breaks. Um, we're, it's going to flag that too. Needle penetration density. If you have a lot of areas where the needles just lots of needle penetrations going into the, the fabric, um, the design checker will check that and flag as well. So I have a design pulled up and it's a design that is loaded with your software, but I've heavily modified it so that it has a lot of potential issues. Uh, so we'll see how the design checker handles that. So here we have the design pulled up. If I want to save the design checker, I can come down to the design checker tab and I can see all the potential problem elements. So I can see that my issue here is no tie stitches, no tie off stitches, no tie in, no tie off, no tie in. Okay, so I've got a lot of elements that don't have tie ins and tie offs. In fact, if I go to my project, and I select at the design level, I can right click, I can go to properties, and I can see that none of my elements have any tie stitches at all. So there's a couple ways to get to those problematic areas. Let me close my object properties. So if I see something in my design checker, I can select it, and it will highlight that element, I can double click on it, and it will bring up the properties for that element. Let me close that. So I could go through and do that for every single element. I don't want to do that. If I have the real estate, I can also see the design checker as another view inside of my project tab. So it pops up over here just like it would for my expanded stitches, my toggle stitch tab. I can toggle design checker to see that. Now, this depends on how much real estate I have on my screen. So if I want to, I can move this over. I've got a lot of room on my screen, so I can open this up and I can see both my project and my design checker. And so you'll notice when I select an element here, it selects the element in the project tab as well as in your view window. That one's a little harder to see because it's pretty small and it's on lots of dark areas, but um, it definitely is selecting them. There's an easier one for you to see. Okay, so how do I start dealing with these? Well, all of these have tie stitch issues. I'm going to select at the design level, right click, I'm gonna to go to properties. I'm going to turn tie stitches on because that's just generally a good idea. Hit apply. And now you'll notice that almost all of my problems or potential issues um, went away and now very few things are being flagged. The thing that is being flagged is this walk stitch right here, and I just selected it in the design checker. It selects it in the project tab. That's handy. It's showing over here. I can right click. I can go to properties. I could double click on the element in the design checker or in the project tab and get to properties. And it's telling me that my walk stitch length is under 15 points. Um, yeah, that's probably not my best plan, so I'm going to change that. Hit apply. And then that goes away as well. I'm going to change that back real quick. Just to make the design checker flag it again. So as you're making changes, um, it will keep up with it. If I select it here, the other nice thing is I may not even need to bring up object properties. So my walk stitch length is under 15 points. I can do that on the property bar as well. I'm just gonna change it here. And now as soon as I move off or hit enter, 
that's fixed that issue. And you can choose to close the design checker and move this back over. If you've got the room, you might even want to just leave design checker open as you're working. Depending on what you have in your design, you may see that it is uh, flagging the design checker and you know that you're okay. So if I'm doing something with a lot of blends, I may have a few layers of stitching and I just, you know what, I don't want to see if I have too many. You can choose what the design checker flags and what it doesn't. To do that, you would go to Tools, Options, and the design checker, and you can uncheck what you would prefer not to see. So if I was doing something that had a lot of layers because I'm doing lots of light densities, and I'm blending lots of things together, I may choose to uncheck two layers of thread. I may choose to uncheck underlay. I might choose to turn these off or back on depending on what I'm doing and what designs I'm working on. But remember that you've got this design checker to help you look at your designs and see what might be a problem in the future or when it gets to a machine. Um, and you can modify those settings tools, options, design checker, and check the ones that you want to see and uncheck the ones that don't really apply for you on this design.